Disclaimer. Lore Olympus is a retelling slash reimagining of the Greek story of Hades and Persephone. Therefore, their character chart placement is dependent on their actions in the webtoon and not on their history. Thank you. Sometimes I forget that the characters that we're dealing with are, well, gods? Powerful deities that control the elements, feelings, even worlds. But of course, there is one that sticks out among the godly, er, gods. Because she isn't a god. Ninith is a river nymph, which in the short term just means that she ruins how I title these videos. But in the long term, well, let's not waste any more time. Let's talk about one of the meanest nymphs around, Zeus's words, not mine, Meaneth. Meaneth is the second Lore Olympus character to ever appear, and she definitely sets her own standard. By standing up our favorite god of the dead and lord of the underworld, Hades, and directly telling Hades that the reason she's standing him up is because I don't feel like being seen with you in general. Hades. All the fine suits in the world won't change the fact that you stink of death. That's rude. And that's kind of mean its thing. It's being rude, especially to Hades, her quote-unquote lover. And for a while, that's really all Meaneth is. She's just a mean nymph. Someone to oppose how sweet and kind Persephone is. Especially with her famous motto, Treat him mean and keep him keen. Which really just feels like an excuse to be mean to him. Meaneth then gets very jealous because Hades and Persephone were seen together. While these moments are important to the story, I'm gonna skip ahead a little to the moments that are really important to Meaneth's character. When Meaneth enters Hades' office looking for a lighter, she finds an engagement ring and starts to panic. Why is he doing this? We both agreed that neither of us are relationship material. This is getting out of hand. We're not even in a public relationship on Facebook. How is he considering marriage? I can't be queen. It's too much pressure. I have no idea how to do diplomatic stuff. I can't even work out which one is the salad fork. I don't need Hera reminding me that I'm trash at every family event. I know I'm trash already. He just needs a strong push in the opposite direction. Fear of commitment, fear of the future, lack of self-worth, jealousy, and lack of respect for her partner Hades. Hades and Minet's relationship is a major aspect of both characters' development. I'll discuss Hades next week, but look on Minet's side. All the things I listed before are not only attributes of a bad relationship, but attributes of Minet herself. She's afraid of the concept of marriage. She's afraid of being a queen believing she's worthless, even bringing Hades down to her level. Minet's lack of respect towards Hades stems from her self-worth, or lack thereof. Minet believes she is trash, someone who doesn't deserve happiness or respect, someone who is not put together, someone who doesn't even respect herself. But the most interesting part of all of this is that she doesn't act like it. Minet acts like she's the best nymph around, she puts up a facade that she doesn't care, that she's cold, unfeeling, and, for lack of a better word, mean. But we do see, in the very same chapter, Meaneth break down. Going to Hades' house, crying and apologizing, in her own way. I, I know I messed up with the party, okay? It's just a lot of pressure, you know? This is your fault to begin with. You think I'm better than I actually am. Meaneth knows her place. She knows what she deserves, and knows that she doesn't deserve the kindness that Hades gives her, the presence that he buys her, and the patience that he has for her. She didn't think that they should be happy together. In fact, she says, I thought we were supposed to be messed up together. And now you get to be all normal and well-adjusted with her? Please, Hades, please don't leave me behind. I don't know what we have, but I'm not ready for it to be over. Now, I think Meaneth represents a couple of things, but I'll go over two of the main things I think she represents. The first and most obvious representation is of a relationship, or a bad one. Meaneth 
is a bad relationship. Both the relationship itself and a partner in a bad relationship. Now, a bad relationship is really dependent on the person you're with and the type of relationship you want and the person that you are. However, there are some universal signs to a bad relationship. Now, for the fact that I did a two-parter webtoon special asking if webtoons can teach us about love and the perfect relationship isn't enough to make you realize I'm not good with love, then I'll just tell you I'm not good with love or relationships. But according to the internet, which we all know is 100% true, some signs of a bad relationship are passive-aggressive behavior, validity, constant exhaustion, and of course, any flat-out aggressive behavior. And wow, does mean it fulfill basically all these requirements for not only your relationship, but a person in general. First, that passive-aggressive behavior which I personally feel Minith has got locked down. Minith demonstrates this in full glory when she lets her jealousy overtake her by sending Persephone to a restricted area with many shades and let's say, gets into trouble. Meanwhile, validity is basically the attribute of a person who will fight with you and then try to make up as fast as possible, which Minith has repeatedly done. I've already mentioned her running to Hades, but we get moments like Minith being super jealous of a newsprint of Hades and Persephone, really to nail home how much Minith will switch. There is no guarantee that she will be happy with whatever she was happy with before. Minith has no agency in her relationships, believing that she can do whatever she wants and still get away with it. However, seeing her <laughs> meal ticket have wandering eyes, of course she panics and tries to lock him down. Which brings us to a really divisive moment with Minith. After trying her hardest to be an actually good partner, setting up dates, talking about their future, Minith even stops doing things with Thanatos. She starts to focus on her relationship. Yeah, sure, she purposely gets Persephone jealous by kissing Hades in front of her and making plans for dinner right in front of her. But that brings up the moment we've all been waiting for. After Minith makes plans with Hades, and gets too drunk to follow through, they have a lovely conversation that goes in a really weird direction. Which brings us to another disclaimer, yay! This portion of the video will focus on themes of domestic abuse, which may be upsetting for some viewers. If you might be upset with that theming, then you can skip to the time on the screen. Throughout this entire episode, we see two separate thought processes. Minith's outward thoughts, the things she says, and the things that she out front thinks, and her innermost thoughts. And we get to see how different they are, and that's extremely interesting to Minith's character. Her outward thoughts are the things that we identify with Minith. It's rude, it's mean, it's blaming others. He always sulks like this. It, it, it's his fault from expecting so much from me. I, I just need to find him. But what's really interesting is her innermost thoughts. At the exact same time of her saying all that stuff, she's thinking, dinner was my idea. I stood him up. I had every opportunity in the world to make this work. Face it, I messed up. Minith regrets her actions. She knows that she messed up bad. She knows that it's her fault. But her pride won't let her admit that. She can't swallow her pride and admit that she's at fault. She can't admit that it's all her fault. And the next scene shows it. When Hades sees her and starts to jab her about her outfit, she kind of bursts at him. When Hades questions her, asking Minith, shouldn't I be the one who gets mad? And questioning her relationship with Theseus, Minith smacks him, yelling, an afternoon with Miss Goody Two-Shoes and you're suddenly an expert on behavior? You're lucky I even consider you. Want to know why? You're the spitting image of Kronos. You have his eyes, his hands, his skin. Who would want someone who resembles the greatest tyrant we've ever known? For the few of you that don't know, in the world of Greek mythology, Kronos was the father to Hades, Poseidon, Zeus, and a couple of the other gods. And like Minith said, he was basically a terror to god kind. When he heard of prophecy that his children would be his downfall, he ate them. 
But Meneth compares Hades to his tyrant of a father, comparing him to almost every aspect of him. However, we see Meneth's innermost thoughts twice here. After hitting Hades, she thinks to herself, why can't I stop being like this? And I don't know why I'm like this. Meneth constantly questions why she's hurting the person she actually cares about. But even if she cares about him, even if she regrets her actions, doesn't change the fact that she abused him both physically and verbally. Finally, when Meneth is set home, she wants to apologize. She knows she messed up. She wants to say sorry, but she doesn't. And when she goes out with Theseus, she's in constant fear that she's the bad guy. Which is fair, because she kind of is. Finally, Meneth cuts Theseus out of her life, and she goes into kind of a slump. Eventually, Hades comes over, and analyzes their poor relationship, and breaks up with her. Which brings us to the other representation I mentioned at the beginning of this video. When Persephone is brought into the conversation, we see Meneth go somewhat kind of dark. Explain to Hades, it won't work. You and Miss Perfect? Do you think cutting back on a few cigars is going to be enough? Scooping her in your arms will magically give you a clean slate? Eventually, she'll see what you're like. What you're really like. It's only a matter of time before you disappoint her. You'll be back. Because we're the same. Now, Hades' reaction is very telling for his character, but I'll get to him another day. Meaneth here acts kind of like an addiction. A secret bad addiction that holds on to someone. That sticks on them, that drags them down, that makes them feel awful. Makes them think they're not worth anything. Even the term, you'll be back, kind of makes me think of a relapse, like someone getting back into an addiction. Because sometimes people believe that they can't get out. That they can't become better. Like they're stuck. Now, I don't really consider Meneth to be truly evil. But her actions throughout the entire story doesn't help her case. Jealousy, aggression, physical, verbal, even mental abuse all land Meneth in the spot of neutral evil. She truly believes that she is garbage. Believes that she hurts people, drags them down, and doesn't deserve anything. She doesn't want to get better. She knows that she messed up with Hades. However, when Hades is moving on, when Hades is trying to get better, Meneth is stuck, trapped by her own pain, her own suffering, her own guilt. It's a tragic tale with Meneth. But you can't get better if you don't want to. And Meneth isn't showing any signs of wanting to get better. But that's all for today. And like always, thank you for watching.